all that mumble shit, all that other shit, you know, it's artistry, it is what it is, niggas taking their time to put that shit together, but it's bullshit. Straight up and down. That's how just how I feel about it, just coming from where rap has come from to where it is right now. These niggas just dragging that shit through the mud because rap has been about clarity. It's been about originality. It's yes. been about really being who you are on track and motherfuckers feeling it. Now, fighting. everybody, there you go, Mr. Nash. Everybody is the same way. Like the same, the beats drop the same way. Yeah. Niggas rapping the same way. Nobody is who they is on rap, on record right now. Cold, I just think that what they would what a nigga do is drink some lean, smoke some weed, pop right. some perks, go in that motherfucker and try to sound like the everything next, that's the out. Next, that well, shit is hey, cool. I, I want to ask you one question. Let me get this one question. What the fuck? Listen, what is Young Thug saying when he say? Nothing. What is he saying? Tell me what he's saying. I don't listen to Young Thug. No, I'm saying. Well, what is Kodak Black saying? I'm talking about what any of them mumble niggas is saying. Right now, no hating. Right now, right now on the line. Let's just say for the record. Let's just say for the record. Hold up. I just want to say this. Just because I don't like it doesn't mean I'm hating on it. I just don't like it. Well, I don't That's like it. it. You know what I'm saying? We don't like it. You know what I'm saying? Straight like that. Yep, yep, like yep, yep, Ain't nothing wrong with right, that. We don't right like now, it. Right now on the line, we have the icon, the man, Mr. Positive K. Yeah. Positive what up, what up, Positive K, what, what it do, baby? What's your man got oh, to do with me? Positive K, what it do? Hip hop, baby, yeah, hip hop, hip hop. I'm Mr. Positive K on video music on. box. Salute, homie. Hey, Y'all had me laughing. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Y'all had me laughing, man. I was there. I'm over here screaming. <laughs> what is it? What is, what is Young Thug say when he says? I know. Tip it, tip it, tip it, tip it. He's a clown. He wears well, we dresses and shit. Saying, but I guess they like it, man. Right. Yeah, you know what I mean? Let's go, man. man. Well, well, I appreciate uh. My positive this, uh, K was clarity, my nigga. When yo came out with his shit, what your man got to do with me, my mm. nigga? That was a joint that I was rocking, my nigga. Yeah, like oh, I grew okay. up looking, looking at that shit, video all that shit. That shit was hot because. <laughs> He was cl it was clear. I could understand what this man was trying to say to me. You feel what I'm saying? And he was trying to say phony. There was, there was no way for you to get that twisted. Right. right. You can't get that twisted. You're going to get that. You and, know you, what I'm and he was fresh and you and had the sweatshirt with the Dookie Rose. We understood where he was coming from. You were from the hood. Yeah, these motherfuckers got, got on. Yeah, these yeah, motherfuckers out there with stilettos and yeah, skinny yeah, jeans and shirts and shit, man. With yeah. saucy shirts and black yeah, 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 polish and red yeah, hair. What the fuck is up with these yeah, niggas, man? Yeah, yeah, we, uh, uh, like real talk. Uh, you know what I mean? Definitely want to thank you. Uh, I guess, I guess that's, that's, that's what they call high fashion. I don't know, man. You know what I mean? Like Rich Homie Quan, he come on. I'm fuck going to forget Biggie lyrics, man. You know what I mean? How you gonna come out there with Lil' Kim and forget Biggie Lyrics? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gonna forget Get Money? You know what I mean? Like, yo, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's where, you know what I mean? Like, yo, come on, man. Let's be real. All right, let's start over. Let's start over. Let's start over. Let's take it from the top. Let's start over. Let's go from the beginning. Let's go for the beginning. Positive K. What up? sir. How you doing, sir? I'm great, man. I mean, yo, today's a great day, man. I'm feeling real good. Me and my homie Greg Knight, so we got together. We Greg Knight, nice. God damn. Yeah. That nigga yeah. 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 Greg Knight, nice. what's up, homie? Yeah, yeah. We just uh, we, we got together and we formed a group called The Great Minds. Uh -huh. And the album just dropped today, man. So it's all it's great. Everybody sent me their posts. They've been downloading and buying the album today. And I've been putting posts up, man. Everybody's been buying it. I've been throwing it back up. You know, showing everybody love who have been supporting. So it's been great. Well, I, I, did, I did actually get to check some of the album out today, and um, I really not. I, I kept. I listened. I listened. I listened. But I'm loving that Bill Russell. I know that's not really what oh. y'all pushing right now, but I love that Bill Russell track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. I appreciate it, man. It's um, we uh, that was done by the Justice League, man. Big shot to the Justice, man, League. Justice League. Really appreciate that, man. That was really dope, man. They they came through for us and, and grazed us off, man. So that's that's wonderful, you know. So um uh. All right, well. Cooler, you got to play that record for me. I want to hear that record, Oh, yeah, man. we definitely going to play it. This is my first time, our first time having you on our show, first time talking to you. So let's let's start from the essence and then work our way to where we are now. So uh, it's it's 86, am I right? 86, 87? Yeah, and, uh, 86, 8, yeah, summer, summer, summer of 86. 
So, and, and it's the time of hip hop where you actually, well, most artists had a DJ with them, and that was pretty much your cosign, a DJ. Did you have a, a DJ? Who was your DJ? Or did you, or did um, you come had, into the I game a, that way? I had a DJ, you know, um, I had a DJ. But at that time, when I was first starting out, I didn't have a DJ at, that, at the moment. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it was. You needed a DJ, but I was just I was in the studio recording and whatnot, so I wasn't really focusing on that. I was just really trying to make some records and get some songs done, you know, so I can get to the point where I needed a DJ so I could start performing. You know what I'm saying? So um, I didn't have a DJ, then I was just in the studio performing. But there was this dude that was mentoring me. His name was Tweety G. He was known as Queen's number one solo sensation. Very, 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 very <laughs> dope dude at that time. Yeah, that's what they, they used to call you a solo sensation Damn. back then. You know, that's how that. That's how you were ranked, man. So um, he was dope. He was the only dude coming from Queens, going up to Harlem and, and going to the uh, Bronx and, and Staten Island and all of that. He was the only one that was doing that, coming from Queens um, um, and really holding his own, you know. So he put me under the wing, and he introduced me to these guys named uh, Mike and Dave, man. Of course, you know from the legendary group Crash Crew, cool. you know. Okay, nice. And um, and they were, putting out, they were putting out an independent compilation album, and uh, it, was, it was called Fast Money. The reason they liked the song I had because it was called Get, the song I had was called Getting Paid. So it kind of associated with the album. Um, I was the first cut on side A, and the, the first cut on the flip side of the album was another dude by the name of Rob Face. And that was his first start where he started. So we started out in the summer of 86, man, with this compilation called, called Fast Money. Now, all right, now you can't just throw that in there. When you say Rob, you mean Rob Bass, Rob Bass? Rob Bates, that's right. That's right. Okay, I want to rock right now. That's, that's right. This, this, rock, the, this the Cooley in the Gang show now. We all 80s babies, 90s babies. We know who Rob Bates is. You can't just slide yeah. that in there and then roll yeah, past yeah, it real yeah. quick like it wasn't it, there. It, it, was, it was so crazy because we were on the, um, we both performed maybe about six months ago uh -huh. on the Tom Joyner Fantastic Voyage Cruise. And it was me, Rob, uh, Scarface, Mr. Cheeks, Big Daddy Kane, Chuck man. Rock, uh, Dana Dane. And we were out there performing, man. And, um, and, and me and Rob were sitting down having dinner, and we were talking about it, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and Chill Will was there, and we were all laughing about Chill the record was not back then, you know? And, he, and I didn't know that Chill Will actually produced the song that Rob Bates did. I didn't even know that. I said, that's a weird day. Yeah, that was my first joint, too. I was like, oh, this is crazy. You know what I'm saying? So that was, that, that was wild. So um, Chill Will from the Get Fresh crew, me, Rob Bates, sitting there eating, talking about something that happened in 86, man. Our, our first record in 86, so that was... That was that was monumental for me, man. That was very, that was that was huge. No doubt. So now you did that. So when uh, when does uh, I got a man? Now take us to how that whole thing jumped off and that whole situation. Uh, we missing the whole we missing the whole decade before we get to yeah. before, we before get to I got a man. Hold on, hold on, a positive K. Yeah, like, that was the um, whole day. Hey, Kate. I got a man. Uh, what happened was that um, after uh, I did the compilation, I needed. I, I knew I had to find a company that wanted to rock with me. So um, what I wanted to do was find a manager. So I went and I found myself a manager, man, and his name was Lamoma Carson. I don't know if you guys know or are familiar with him. I know you are, but, but his, his government name was Lamoma Carson, and his father was Sonny Carson from the oh, movie yeah, Education Sonny of Carson. Sonny Carson. Um, yeah, he was his son. And uh, you guys know him now with Professor X, the Overseer. Uh, I was his first artist, and he was my first manager. Right. And um, and he was the one that took me to first priority music, where I linked up with uh, Audio 2 and MC Light. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, that's where I, I did a lot of writing for, 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 for over there, with a compilation album we did over there. It was called Basement Flavor. Um, did a lot of songs. Uh, MC Light, I'm Not Having It. Um, many styles for, for, for Milk and Gears. Uh, 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 Survival of the Fittest for MC Light. Wrote a lot of songs back there. Like about, on that compilation album, the probably was about 14 songs. I wrote about 12 of them. So, um, th th that yeah. was a great time. 12 of them? So, yeah. Damn, you got that money. I'm going to pass forward for you. So, so the reason I, that I got a man because I'm not having it with such a big record uh, uh, for me and MC Light that I wanted to do a, a, a follow-up to I'm not having it. But I had label problems, and I wound up leaving the company. So I'm stuck with this song that I'm going to do, and uh, there was no more MC Light. So uh, uh -huh. that's how I Got a Man came about, and, and, that, and, that was, and that was the start of a whole, a whole new era of something else. All right, but can I ask you a question? This is New Money Moon. Can I ask a question? Yo, yes, sir. Um, I was wondering, like, now in the culture, it seems like people come up by dissing another dude. Like, you know what I'm saying? Or dissing another rapper. It seems as if, like, from the beginning of time, 
niggas been dissing another nigga to get in. Like, ooh, like yeah, yeah. it really ain't been about the merit of the music. Like, yeah, kind of uh, niggas listen to your music after you diss a nigga. I, I was yeah. wondering if you ever had to diss a nigga or, you know what I'm saying, because it's big now, niggas dissing people and all that. Like, did you ever have to diss a nigga to get on? Like, how was it for you to really get in? How did you really get in, period? You know well, 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 the rap game is based on you saying you're the best and you're the one that that that, that, that could do it the best. You know, um, I always felt, I mean, I always held my own. I always I always kept ten toes down to the ground, man. Right. You know, anybody's right. like, me off my right. You know what I'm saying? People came, I rhymed. Um, um, me and Mikey D went at it many nights. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He started drinking, I started drinking. If, you know, oh, he rhyming, I'm rhyming, and we going yeah, at it. Yeah, I remember. You know I remember a big homie right here schooled me one day, yo. Like, niggas don't even remember this story, but it really tipped me over the top. Like, yo, we, I was just start rapping, and this nigga right here, like, sitting beside me, like, yo, was rapping hard as shit. Like, I think my man uh -huh. cousin was from in town and shit, and yo, was rocking beats and shit, and we was in your basement, and we was just spitting back and forth, and I remember, you know what I'm saying? I remember yo schooled me, you know what I'm saying? I never forget that day, you know what I'm saying? That propelled me and made me think that I can get on a track with any nigga that you ever ever have a nigga like that for you? Um, I'll tell you this, man. Uh, I rhymed, I used to, the nucleus of my crew was, uh, was, was Big Daddy Kane, right. Jay-Z, Star yeah, Spurs, and Fox. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you something. If you was a nice walking out. into a room yeah, like that, yeah. you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, if your so, shit wasn't so, rocking, so, niggas ain't fucking with you. That's right. how I was going. Yeah. Yeah, so we on the tour bus. We going from town to town. We ain't got nothing to do. I mean, we 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 we, we going hard all day long. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's like you had to, you had to hold your own to be that kind of individual and that person. Right. Me myself, I never had to come up uh, uh, on somebody else's back. Right. I didn't have to right. Break right. Break somebody down to come up. But mm -hmm. I always held my own, and everybody knew that, yo, he nice as a motherfucker. I don't think you even want to do that. Right. Right. You know, right. 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 will tell you. Kane will tell you. Freddie Fox will tell you. Now, nah, I need to do what you want to mess with that. Nah, that's not happening. Right. I'm right. I'm letting you know right now. Yeah. You know, you think it's, I, I appreciate that. that. I appreciate you know. that. Hey, yo. Uh, positive K. This is Wiley, man. I remember, yeah, you know what I'm saying, like watching the videos. You know what I'm saying? And every time Light used to have them videos, man. You know what I'm saying? And you, you know what I mean? You used to be right by our side. You was a fly nigga. Yeah. You feel me? <laughs> you know what I mean? Appreciate, and I, appreciate that. Yeah, I used to sit back. I'd be like, dang, this nigga, you know what I mean? This nigga fly. You feel me? Like, who is yo? And they'd be like, yo, that's by the K. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, yeah, a lot yeah, of motherfuckers yeah. got they swag yeah, from you, homie. You held it down. Plus, you know what I'm saying? I know, like, far as that era, you know what I mean? Far as the MCs and the battles, you know what I mean? Because, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like, in the streets of Brooklyn, that shit was competitive, right? You know what I mean? Right, and, uh, you know what I'm saying? And I remember uh, one time LL, you know what I'm saying, made a, made a reference to you and said, man, I seen a dude pie the K eat a nigga ass, you know what I'm saying, like in Queens. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And I was like, mm. damn, pie the K. I'm like, yo, who the fuck? You know what I mean? Then when I really realized, you know what I'm saying, what was that, uh, poor Georgie? Georgie Porch. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Couldn't wait the game to wait too long. Like, <laughs> hey, I, yo, yeah, you, I seen you on the you back. You wrote man. that shit, yo? You know what I'm saying? And that's the question uh, I was going to ask you. wrote that shit. How many of them motherfucking lyrics did you grace that for? Because that's a fucking classic. Man, a whole bunch of songs. Uh, there, you, man, you see what I'm saying? So I already know. You not gonna, I know you're not going to put it out there, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yo. You know what I'm saying? Like, on some real shit. I seen you in that poor Georgie, yo. You was chilling. You know what I mean? And I was like, yo, yes, yo had a lot of penmanship and that shit, yo. And I want to give you homage, man. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, man, yo, real nigga, man. You, man. Salute, homie. You know what with man? That. And it's good talking <laughs> to you, homie. Thank you so much, family. Thanks for the compliment. That's much appreciated, man, because y'all sound like some real people, man, some real dudes, and you know what you're oh, talking yeah. about. So you know I man. think this is a real compliment, man. Thank yeah, you so much, man. family. Hey, man, we do our history and hip-hop, and we respect yeah, those who pay the way for us, man. man. We real Word them out. You know, Word them out. No doubt. And it's just a, a testament to you as an artist that you're still working. Like, And so is, oh, yeah. is the passion still there? Like, is, is it now more work, or is it still a love for hip-hop that keeps you like in it right now? It was work, like so towards, towards the end of like ninety six, two thousand ninety six to two thousand. It was work for me because I fell out of love with the game, and I just I, that's when I really kind of left and and disappeared because I really couldn't I couldn't take too much of that. I worked and I did a lot of things behind the scenes. You know, I was I penned a couple of songs to some people, man. Like I said, I, I don't talk about that, man. I think my my publisher to keep me alive more than anything. You know what I'm saying? Um, I catch my little, you know, catch my dates here and there, you know, with the with the with the canes and the slick ricks and all of them, and mm -hmm. and the brand newbies and stuff. I try to get out as much as I can, but um, you know, publishing kind of keeps me kind of floating, man. I, I I did some good work, man, and I I, I take pride in that. 
But um, I fell out of love with the game, man, and I walked away, man. And I, I, I never got dropped from a label. I never got, you know, tossed out. Um, uh, when, I, when I left, when I left Polygram, I asked for a release. I said, please release me. I want to go. And I gave up some things so I could leave, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, I always feel in my mind that I left at the top of my people what I wanted to do. And, and that's me coming back right now because now I'm really more in love, it, love, love with the game right now. And I'm more passionate about it, especially working with Greg Knight because, you know, I've never been in a group, and I always wanted to be in a group. I, always, I think that's why I probably where I did songs with, with you know, with, with a lot of my people is because I always wanted that feeling to be in a group. And it feels good that you have to think about everything yourself and, and come up with everything yourself and do everything yourself. <laughs> So it, it felt kind of good working with Greg, man, especially he's a great talent, man. He, he's just a great producer. He, he, he's just a good producer as he is an artist. So it was, it was, it was wonderful doing that. But to answer your question, yeah, I'm, I, it, it's, it's all love right now, man. I mean, I'm enjoying what I'm doing, you know, all the new interviews, talking to cats like yourself. I used to the Ricky Smiley show recently, man, and, you know, people be reaching out to me, man, through Facebook and Instagram. I mean, the love is, like, really overwhelming right now. I really dig it, man, you know. And like, the last song I just did with Mr. Cheeks, everything is just, like, beautiful, man. I'm, like, really feeling, like, like really loved right now. Like, this is what I, I, I'm supposed to be doing, and this is where I'm supposed to be at. And I feel like, yo, you deserve it, homie. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? Yo, Thanks, family. Oh, my nigga. You OG, it, my nigga. Salute, homie. Straight up. No Thanks, doubt. family. Much appreciated. Y'all making me feel good tonight, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't yeah. going to drink tonight, but y'all going to make me drink tonight. Yeah, yeah man. Tip up, man. Toss one back for us, homie. We got one more. We toss it back. We toss it back. You might as well. We got one y'all more question for you, Pablo. Like, like, hey, I'm going to do just that then, man. I'm going to do just that. Man, man. man. We got no another doubt, question yo. for you. Uh, Mayberry has a question. Hey. Hey, okay, hey it's Mayberry. I actually just have a quick question. Knowing that the way that the hip-hop has, I don't want to necessarily say evolved, but shifted, what That's would a good you word. Shift shift it. That's it. the right word. Because yeah, I don't want to say it's evolved. I mean, the sounds mm. are different. So I feel like right now hip hop has shifted. From yeah. your perspective, what do you feel like? Because I know that there's a lot of like rappers that I come across that feel like that they really can't get their niche in the game right now because they're mm. true lyricists. They really write and really know how to articulate, and they're going back to the heartbeat of hip hop. How do you mm-hmm. feel like we can? we can put that on the map today or what do you feel like it's going to take for us to really get hip hop back? Well, I'll tell you this. Um, that's a three part answer I got to give to you right there. One is sure. that hip hop has definitely shifted. Um, I don't, I don't say it's like, I don't say it's terrible at all. You know, I guess some, some guys I, I really do. I do like some of this stuff. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I dig certain songs I do like, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't like, uh, 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 culturally, how they represent rap music, what they're doing, mm-hmm. but there are there, there are some songs that stick their heads up, which I do like. Um, I think the creativity has definitely died down a lot yeah. since my since my generation, um, since, since since the baby boomers. The millennials kind of creativity yeah. is a little weak to me, in my in my opinion. Um, I, on the other hand, I think the production is really incredible right now. Right. I think producers yeah. are really out of this world. Yeah. Um, yeah, when we I came up, when we, when we came up, all we crazy. had was the uh, two turntables and the microphone, our mm-hmm. MP12, and then towards the end it was MP3. So we didn't have too much to work with, you know what I'm saying? Right. But now these guys got so much technology, and most of these producers now are accomplished musicians. These dudes are playing three and four and five instruments, yeah. you know, on top of being in, uh, uh, accomplished engineers, you know, and you know, and and these guys write music now. So, I mean, and, and, and the technology is out of this world. You don't even mm-hmm. have to do that much anymore. Right. You know, you don't even have to have that much knowledge to really put a song together. So these guys are really doing some great things as far as production, but the creativity is just not matching the production. So mm. I think that's, that, mm. that's kind of falling. Mm. So but, that's, um, that's, a great, okay. that's a great segue yeah, into the next question. So knowing yeah, that you... Yeah. Knowing that you have knowledge of the industry, you've worked with a lot of different mm-hmm. people, do you feel like mm-hmm. the root cause of a lot of the way that hip-hop has shifted is because of the industry? Or do you feel like it's really because you hear a lot of people, like even we were talking about earlier, that a lot of artists are identical with their approach and they all sound alike. So it's kind of mimicked, gimmicky, you know, all of that type of stuff. So it's not really authentic. What do, you, do you feel like today it's driven more by the industry because of what sells and that repetition in music versus having people really come out and do that raw hip-hop approach? 
definitely. It's definitely it's definitely the powers that be that's controlling the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, because if you remember at one time, they was, I was one of the first ones to do it. I was one of the independent guys out here that had marketing mm-hmm. money, who had his own company, and, and, and the A&R person didn't exist to me because I didn't need the A&R guy to tell me what I, mm-hmm. what I was doing in the studio, what was great and what wasn't great. Mm-hmm. Um, um, when you had people like myself come out with, with, with big records and a lot of people that came out with big records, um, uh, these companies didn't didn't – they didn't have their, their hand on the pulse of the streets, you know. Um, so what they did is they went and started doing, doing these, these glorified production deals, and they started getting these guys to go out into the street, and you go find me what I need and bring it back to me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you start having this trickle-down theory where the guys went out and found this guy. You signed to my production company, and I'll sign to his production company, and we'll sign to his label, and we'll take it to mm-hmm. Warner Brothers. You know what I'm saying? So that's when you start seeing records going on street life, yep. slash this, slash that, slash that. And that's what started happening, you know. Um, and, and, and it was the piggyback te- technique. Uh, you know, the cookie cutter whole thing. If it, if it, yep. if it sounds good over there, it, 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 you know, it'll work over here. here. Let's just yep. do the same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Eminem came out. There was a whole bunch of people trying to do white rappers. Yep. Um, um, people started doing uh, the fast stuff. You, you had guys sound like Jay-Z. And you had to sound exactly, exactly identically like Biggie. I mean, yeah. it, was, it wasn't even yeah. close. Yeah. like yep. exactly identical. Yeah. You know, and, and it's crazy. Maybe it's bite. Bite, bite is used to get. Kilt but you know what? It's a, it, to to what he's what he's really saying is is it's not really the people. It's it's bigger the than the people. It's the, the machine, machine that's mm-hmm. running the people, mm-hmm. which is the labels. Most definitely. Well, and well, that's, what to, that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted to get to. So I'm glad you're providing clarity in that because that's definitely the root. That's really the the big. Well, that's the meat and potatoes of the whole situation. Is the industry. well? Let me finish. Let me finish it because, it, it, like I said, it's more deep. It's even deeper than that. Mm-hmm. Like I said, um, um, you know, then they went and they cut off all the independent guys, like you know, like myself or whatnot. No, we don't do any more independence anymore. You know what I'm saying? So now everything was going mainstream through that label, and they start cutting all the little small companies down. They shut all the un- all the small companies down. Now you start looking, and you only see about five major uh, 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 recording artists that do hip hop. You can count them on one hand right now. I mean, right. you just, I mean, seriously, you can just count them on one hand, right. you know. And, and, and it's hard for people to come back in and do what they have to do because they've cut, they, they, the machine has cut off all the avenues for you to try to get yourself heard or try, or try to get yourself into the system until the, until, until the YouTube boom came out. And then you had little YouTube artists that popped up and those things started happening, you know. But I'm going to quote somebody what Charlie Chaplin used to say. He said, Charlie Chaplin said that, I got into a Charlie Chaplin contest and came in third. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's hard to be. A, it's hard to be you because when you're successful, right. there's going to be a million people just like mm-hmm. you, just oh, like you. Yeah. And now you're in, you're in an industry where everything sounds the same. You can turn on the radio today, and every song is identical to the, to the mm-hmm. song that played before that. You know, and the ones that are a little bit different is the one that has a little bit more success. But that's it. But everything is, and and and, and they keep it very very sim, very slim. Uh, marginalized being different. I mean, you can't find no real drastic differences with all the songs that play on radio right now. Right. And that's the machine that does that, you know. Because now you got to look at it like this and say, people like myself, hip-hop has grown up now. Hip-hop has is, 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 is been around a long time now, uh, over, over 50 years. So, so hip-hop has grown up. So the demographics have changed. It's not 13 to 21 anymore. You can't sell me a Justin Bieber record. I'm not going to buy a Justin Bieber record. You know what I'm saying? Right. Maybe when I was, maybe, maybe maybe 20 years ago, I might have been, been interested in listening to some stuff, but I'm not going to buy a Justin Bieber record. So the demographics for hip-hop has definitely, totally changed. And the powers that be, these companies got to realize that. And the only way this thing is going to open back up again is if these companies say, listen, we got to start catering to this market. We can't call it old school no more. We just have to just call it music. We're going to have to go ahead and just open it up and start getting these groups that were out here before and, and sell some records. It probably won't be a triple, a, a, a triple platinum songs out of the gate, but when you start building that market back up again and know that there is a market for people who want to buy a Big Daddy Kane record, who wants to listen to Nice and Smooth again, who wants to hear a Slick Rick new record, you have to just go ahead and cater to that and just start feeding that, feeding that demographic and let it grow, man. And, you know, and I, I guarantee you, music will change by leaps and bounds if they start doing that. No doubt. And that that's what's up. Man, is the message. Real talk. On the line, we have Positive K. Yes, definitely. We definitely appreciate you uh, yeah, dropping yes, ultimate knowledge. We definitely appreciate you taking time out today. Uh, before I let you slide out of here, let everybody know how to get up with you, uh, where they can find the album, and um, everything they need to know. 
Listen, man, I want everybody to reach out to me if you can because I feed off your energy, too. So if y'all keep me going, that's the more I'm going to put in. I'm going to get more amp. I'm going to get more hype. So reach out to me, man, at uh, on Instagram and Twitter at positive underscore K underscore. That's positive underscore K underscore on Instagram and Twitter. Um, also, the official positive K on Facebook. That's the official positive K on Facebook. Also, reach out to us at The Real Great Minds. That's The Real Great Minds, D-A Real Great Minds. And uh, just, just friend request me, reach out to me, shoot, shoot, shoot me something in the, on, on, the, on the direct messages. And uh, I, you follow me, I follow you back. As long as you got a profile picture, I'm rocking with you if you're rocking with me. You know what I'm saying? Mm, so, man, that's what's up, OG. Man, yo, this salute, our, homie. You feel me? Right yo, talk, salute, man. OG. You know this is uh, Mike Cooley, and I definitely want to thank you and uh, your whole staff. Uh, you know, I reached out, and uh, you guys got right back to us. You are only yep. the uh, second major artist that has done that. Um, the first person we talked to, we got to talk to General Steel with Smith & Wesson. Uh, yeah, yeah. He blessed us with a call, and you... And so Salute, yeah. you guys go on the Cooley in the Game Wall of Fame right now. So we definitely appreciate it. Well, check this out, time. man. It won't yeah. be your last one, man. When I come back, man, it's just y'all probably going to be in a whole different area, a whole different thing going on. Hey, <laughs> Tom, <laughs> get up, man. Salute, you know? homie. Yeah, salute, OG. We yeah. always now, salute OG, OG respect, homie. You know what I mean? Much respect, it's much it's love, true. homie. No I appreciate doubt. it. But definitely, definitely, before you go, I want to drop this joint. So go ahead and can you intro that Bill Russell for us? Yo, this is Positive K, and you got to listen to the great minds of Positive K and, and Greg Nice. And this is the Bill Russell. I can break dance. I can do the hustle. Oh. Yeah. All right, have a good yes, one, sir. Yeah. Peace. Love you, um. Love you, too. If you cock diesel, yo, flex your muscle. It's Greg and a man. I'm all in it, man. Go deep in the guts. Come and coot your man. man. Rock soul train. Never did bandstand. Duck up, honey. Something that I can't stand. Ride the crossroads, but. After this, we're going to come back, yo.